Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. As promised, we are out at the longer range with the Swiss K31. In the last video, if you haven't seen it, we did a quick load workup and got a decent load going that I think will work all right. Uh, I had mentioned that I had done a load workup before with IMR 3031 and the 168 grain Hornady boat tail hollow point match bullet. And then I worked up a load with the Shooter's World 4350 powder. Today what we're doing is confirming that load at 100 yards and then we're going to see uh, what the drop is like and how it lines up with the sights from uh, 200 on out to 600 or 625 yards. That's the plan for today anyway. Uh, you will notice the target camera is probably not quite as crisp as usual. I am using a uh, phone scope through a not super clear spotting scope on the target because most of our focus is gonna be out at the longer distances uh, where I don't wanna sit my target camera and get lead splatter from the targets. So that's what we're doing. I'm gonna start out with a group of the 3031 load and let's uh, go ahead and shoot five rounds. I'll probably put one round through the barrel of old, uh, of this 180 grain stuff. Ignore any writing you see off to the side on the paper. That was from the last guy who used these targets and graciously left them behind for me to use. I did not have a lot of cardboard along. All right, I'll shoot this one round with the 180 grain bullet. And I might as well shoot it at steel at 300 just for the heck of it. <laughs> Always nice to hear first round impacts. I will be curious, and now that I think of it, I'm probably going to try it out. Uh, when we get all done with today's testing, I'm going to take his loads with the old bangled up pull down 180 grain bullets and a pretty light charger 4895 and see how those line up with the sights. All right, five rounds, and then I've got eight rounds left of this load that I'll save for some uh, drop testing later on with this IMR3031 load. Okay, got the sight back down to 100 yards. We're gonna be shooting at that top target here with the 3031 load. I'm gonna be using a six o'clock hold on the black dot. And I know I'm going to get this comment, so I'm going to head this off ahead of time. Uh, to shoot the K31, because of how the bolt works, you do have to lift your head off the stock. Otherwise, that uh, ring and the back of the bolt would be slamming into the bottom of my eye socket. So, no keeping the cheek on the stock for this one. these old military rifles I do wish for a little lighter trigger that's a lot of effort that's got to go into that before it breaks but it is a crisp clean break and with a decent technique and somewhat of a natural point of aim it usually uh, does halfway well for me let me check the camera and see how that hurt all right not the greatest <laughs> but probably more my shooting than anything I am still experimenting with what kind of targets give uh, the most precise aim point, which again, not the greatest, but that's what we're working with for now. I'm gonna give the barrel a bit to cool down and we'll see if I can do somewhat of the same thing with the Shooter's World 4350 load. All right, I'm running out of ammo boxes, so I've just got these in a bag here. Uh, this is 50 grains of Shooter's World 4350. I believe I said in the last video that I should have gone like 50 and a half or 51. But I don't remember that for sure. This is what I got loaded up. Bottom target there. Got a little more recoil punch to it, that's for sure. I would assume that's just because we're using a larger powder volume. Even though the velocity is about the same or similar. 
that alone might be enough to make it worth shooting the 3031 load. So far, I'm not sneezing at that. Tell you what, with the uh, notch and blade type sights, it is difficult for my eye especially to get them lined up. Use my front sight focus like I should. Alright, if I pulled any shot, it was probably that one. Not too shabby, all in all. I'm going to be happy with that for a 100 yard group. I'm going to say, let's move on and shoot two through six. The vintage military open sight match that I'm shooting with this is all shot from prone. That's probably how I should be doing this. But I'm going to shoot from the bench uh, and just try to get some decent data today. The only target I have at 200 yards is that Know Your Limits rack, and it is very, very hard to see. I'll go ahead and bump it to sight setting 2. It's in a shadow there. I can just barely make it out. 300 will be easy because it's in the sun. That was the plate I was aiming at. Not exactly sure where on the plate it hit. Let's see if I can possibly get the one next to it. All right, for not being able to see the plate, I'm happy with that. Let's move on to 300 where the target's at least in the sun. I'll shoot for that square since it doesn't have any hits on it yet. It'll be real easy to see where I'm at. I've got the sight at three. Just using a six o'clock hold on the target, I think I went high. Problem with not having a, a spotter actively here. I'm gonna aim slightly lower. Leave a little air gap in between the top of the sight post and it. Okay, <laughs> I'm happy with that. Let's take uh, one more shot to confirm and then I'm gonna give the barrel a second to, to cool down. Man, I love this rifle. All right, folks. Time for 400 yards. And remembering from my last drop, starting at 400 yards, I was shooting a little bit high. So I'm going to leave it on setting three to start out with at 400. And I'm going to use a six o'clock hold, just kissing the bottom of the target. I think I was just barely under it. But of course, you guys saw that better than I did. All dead on. I do not see where the impact was on the target. So I'm gonna shoot one more. That's holding dead on at setting three. I don't know if I'm hitting in the black or what. <laughs> I guess I'll shoot one more. I'm gonna aim just a little bit higher this time. See if I can maybe get it in the white. All right, doing the spot my own shot thing with a very short video clip on the phone scope. Since I can't seem to See where my shot's going. And that's the downside to spotting for yourself. <laughs> I was on the wrong target. I was actually looking at the 500 yard target. So I'm gonna try to hit that small, try to hit that tiny target there at 400 yards. I missed that high. I can see that with the naked eye. I'll put one more on that 400 yard gong spot for myself. I saw where that one went. I want to get this 400 yard really dialed in because that is on the longer side of the average shot. So what I'm going to do is put it on setting four 
and used my six o'clock hold. It's easier to see targets from this distance. And I would guess that I shoot high on this shot, but we will see. Looks like we're good. So I'm, I am on setting four and gonna try to hit that square. I puff, don't know where that went. Oh, I was right over the top of it. Okay, I know where I'm hitting. So I'm gonna leave it there for now because I don't have a ton of ammo left loaded. All right, we're back on that. 500 yard target with the camera, and I'm actually shooting it this time. <laughs> I'm gonna start out leaving it on setting four and using a dead on hold. I'm guessing I'm gonna be low on this one, but you never know. No, I think that was actually high. Okay, six o'clock hold. Just kissing the bottom edge of the target. I was off the left edge on that one. I've been mostly to the left, so I'm gonna get favored just a little bit right. Still holding uh, bottom edge. Just under it, but it looked like my windage was good. These calls might be way off. This is what I'm seeing with my naked eye. Okay, I'm gonna hold a little bit higher, favoring right. Okay, I'm not making contact with it on setting four. So I'm gonna move to setting five. I got maybe one or two shots before I gotta let my barrel cool. Setting five. Bottom edge, 500 yards. That was over it. One more shot. If I don't connect on this one, we are going to let the barrel cool off. All right, a hit pretty near the center. I was bottom, I was holding on the bottom right corner. Okay, let's give this barrel about 10, 15 minutes to cool down. Then we'll try to get a few more hits here at 500 yards and then we'll jump out to six. I have four rounds left. We're gonna try to make a hit at 600 yards. I am going to start at setting six and I'm gonna hold bottom right corner again like I did at 500 yards. I got deer walking across at exactly 200. First round impact at 600 yards. I'll take that. I see two spots on the target and I don't remember which was mine. So I'm gonna take that shot again. That one I can see, and that's exactly where I want it. Okay, I'm super happy with that based on how long it took to get five dialed in. Okay, I've got two rounds left. I'm gonna try to get a couple more hits at 500 just to verify. I'm gonna load both shots in the magazine, and let's get two hits here at 500 yards. That one went high left, or high right. I know it did. I am on setting five, just verifying. All right, that's gonna do it for the test with this load. I'm pretty happy with where everything's hitting. It's a little closer to matching the sights than my 3031 load from what I can remember. The last part of the test with the K31 today is for my own entertainment. 
So I've got uh, a few shots left with the 41 and a half grains of IMR 3031. I'm going to shoot with the exact same data that we developed just now with the Shooter's World 4050 loads. And I'm going to see if I can make hits similarly with those. So, first, first of all, uh, we already verified 300 yards with just about anything on setting three. So let's start at 400 yards. We're going to go 6 o'clock on setting four. Uh, I'm not going to show you the targets on this one. Hopefully you can hear the ping in the background. So I'm going to go between these fairly rapidly. Impact. 500 yards, bottom right corner, setting five. Right just because of the wind, I'm actually going to hold dead up. I was slightly high on this one. I need to hold just a tad lower. That's too low. That was high. I've been shooting a long time and my form is falling apart. One more try here at 500 yards. I was high again. Okay, so the data is a little bit different between us. There's a hit at 500 yards and I was holding significantly lower. So we are shooting just a little bit different. All right, 600 yards, uh, we're gonna hold on the bottom. And if I remember right, I gotta hold significantly low with this load. Ding. And ding. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Uh, I've got some really good drop data here with the K31. It's been a really good time today, getting out to distance again with the K31, uh, making some really good hits on steel, get, getting our data dialed in with this load. And I'm going to go home and reload all this brass with this exact same load. I think we can make it work. So anyway, thanks again for watching, and y'all have a good one. Alright guys, I threw in a bonus clip there. I threw in some of the ammo that was loaded with 175 grain bullets. Uh, this is ammo loaded by the guy who owned this gun before me, uh, except I pushed the bullet back to an appropriate depth so it doesn't jam into the lands. And same data, same hits, all the way out to 625 yards with almost boring regularity. I love this rifle. <laughs>